Hello everyone. Welcome back to another devlog for Territoy, my sandbox game about building a planet. This past month has been very productive. I added a ton of quality of life improvements, completely reworked the clouds as you saw in the thumbnail, and added a main menu. The game is getting closer and closer to completion, so I'm going to hold a small playtest soon. If you want a chance to play the game early, or if you just want to stay updated on its development and give feedback, then join the new Discord server linked in the description. Without further ado, let's see how the game looks after this month's changes. The first change I made was to the terrain tools. An issue I was having previously is that if you drag your mouse very quickly while editing terrain, there would be visible gaps due to the limited frame rate. All I needed to do was simulate an extra mouse click in between the two clicks that I actually measured, and just like that, the problem is fixed. Next, I added a color picker for the props. And you may also notice that I added custom cursors, which really improved the overall look. In the same vein, I also added a hex code editor for the prop colors, so if a player wishes to use a color they found online, for example, they now can. I then added an angle selector for placing props. For props which have a direction, for example this flag, you can now choose which direction it will face with the Q and E keys. And finally, the game now has sound. Listen and tell me what you think. The last change I made before starting on the clouds was a flatten tool, which, as the name implies, flattens terrain to the same level as at your mouse. Before we continue with the video, if you like what you see, please consider wishlisting the game on Steam. It's the best way to support me and really helps the game gain visibility. The link to the store page is in the description. Thank you. Reworking the clouds is something I've been meaning to do for a while. I never was quite happy with the look of the old clouds. They just seemed cheap and really had no volume. The solution I went for was full-on ray-traced volumetric cloud rendering. I'll link some resources in the description for those of you that want to learn more, but the technique basically works like this. For each pixel, you cast a ray into the scene. At regular intervals along this ray, you sample a texture that stores the cloud's shape, adding the value of this texture to a sum. This sum represents the total density of the cloud along the ray. Then, to get the opacity of the cloud from the total density, you use an equation called Beer's Law, which looks like this, and gives you the transmittance how much light can shine through, given the density. There are of course countless minor details I've skipped over, but please check the description if you want a more complete explanation. So here's that basic process working. In order to get the clouds to have this shape, I used a 3D noise texture for sampling along the ray. To generate this noise, I made a quick little application called Noise Toy, which allows me to edit and view the noise in real time in order to get a good shape. The link is in the description if you want to try it out. 
You might notice though that these clouds are way too bright. They have no lighting applied. Calculating lighting is done in a similar manner to calculating the opacity. While marching through the cloud volume initially, at every point we sample the density, we also cast a ray out towards the sun and sample the density uniformly along that ray in order to get the density towards the sun. We then again use Beer's Law to get the transmittance of light and add that value to a sum, with the total sum representing the total amount of light the cloud receives. And just like that, our clouds have lighting. However, I really wasn't happy with them. There were a few issues with the lighting, and I really didn't like the overall shape. I tried a bunch of different things, including adding these little cubes, which looked kind of cool, but eventually I just decided to restart. This time, I started by making just one cloud look really good, and then scaling it up. And here's what I ended up with. I was much happier with these clouds. They have a nice shape and move very well. However, they still really didn't fit the style of the game. They were a bit too realistic. To fix this, I came up with a pretty elegant solution. When sampling the cloud density, all I did was round the position to a point on the voxel grid, and suddenly the clouds are voxelized. Thanks to this new method of cloud rendering, I was also able to give them shadows, really making them feel part of the world. The last thing I did this month was adding a main menu, which has been missing for a while. I first just got the basic layout down, which, after a bit of iteration, looked like this. Eventually, the planet on the right will be fully decorated and will be randomly chosen from a list of different options, but for now it's just blank. I then added the basic play menu, which lists all of the saved planets and displays some basic information about them. Saving and loading wasn't too hard to implement, as I basically just had to use my voxel engine's built-in saving function. Next, I added a menu to create a new planet, with a couple of different options. Then, I gave the player the ability to rename and delete their planets as well as added an icon to each save with a screenshot of the planet, which is automatically generated when you click save. Next came the options menu. And finally, the credits menu was created. And look at that, I'm not the only one working on this game anymore. I have indeed hired a composer, Madison James Smith, to make the game's music, which is super exciting. Here's a sample of what he's been working on.
And that's it for this month's changes. As I mentioned, the game is getting closer and closer to completion, so be on the lookout for a release date announcement soon. Don't forget to wishlist and join the Discord, and I'll see you next time.